Hi, welcome to a part for you video tutorials. This video tutorial will be shown to you by Dave. He will take you through a step-by-step -step procedure in repairing this appliance. Hi there. In this video I'll be showing the differences between the cooker control switch and the regulator. Although in most instances the word regulator is used to define any form of control that turns the elements on and off, there is quite a big difference between the two as you'll see. Here I'll be concentrating on how they operate. How to fit a switch can be seen in another video. Switches are just that, and they're operated by turning a control knob which is attached to a camshaft. As the shaft rotates it either opens or closes contact points on the switch. These contacts are at the end of brass arms which rest on the cams. In this manner it's possible to have two or more contacts closed at the same time, but these contacts would have had to have been preset by the manufacturer of the switch. This would allow for an increase of heat in an element or hot plate by turning on another section of the element. On first glance these two look the same, but if you look closely you'll see the cams are slightly different and one has a harness on the end. Also, when you turn them over you can see one of the contacts doesn't go right across. Both switches are for the same cooker, but the harness is there to support a piggyback thermostat which operates the oven. There are a number of manufacturers of these switches, so they do vary in shape and style, although they all work in the same way. I only have two different types here, just to illustrate what I mean. There's also a large variety of switches by each manufacturer, so you do need to be sure you're replacing the switch with the one that's designed for that machine and the element or hot plate it will be operating. One way to locate the correct switch is to type in your model number in the search bar at apartview.co.uk and you'll get shown a list of all the relevant parts for that appliance. Once again you can see the locating pins on the rear of the switch that hold the piggyback thermostat. If you've given the correct information to the supplier you should receive the right switch, but check it anyway because some switches look the same but are slightly different. Here we have the underside of a hot plate with the cover removed, so you can see the different element connections the switch operate. By making contact with different terminals it's possible to alter the heat output. The switches don't have any thermostatic control over the hot plate, it's controlled by the thermostat in the centre. Now we come to the regulators. As with the switches there are a number of different types of manufacturers. These are governed by the flow of electricity through a bimetallic strip rather than the temperature of the element although it amounts to the same thing in the end. The hotter the element gets, the more current it draws, and according to the setting you have the regulator at, determines when the bimetallic strip will trip and turn the element off. In this way you can regulate the current and therefore the temperature of the element through the control. Here's a slightly different design type of regulator. This one has a few contacts that make and break according to the current flow. But as with all the other regulators and switches, the contacts and terminals will differ from one design to another. So, I'll say it again, it is important to get the correct one for your appliance. You can order all your parts, accessories and tools online at apartforyou.co.uk. This regulator has an adjuster which allows you to alter the current flow settings yourself. However, I would emphasise that this is not a procedure I'd recommend unless you really know what you're doing. Replacing the cooker thermostat is covered in a number of our free videos at apartforyou.co.uk but I'll just run through the basics of connecting one to the switch because fitting a piggyback thermostat onto one of these switches is quite straightforward but you can slot it in upside down. So take note how the original one came off and refit the new one the same way up. If you're not sure, clip the stat in place and try rotating the control knob. If it goes all the way round and back again easily, then it's incorrectly. But if it only goes halfway round before stopping, then you have it upside down. Don't force the knob round or you could damage the stat because the, there's a small lip in the housing that acts as a stop for the shaft and excessive force could break it.
The elements that regulate its control are not as robust as the hot plates are and need a bit more care when handling them. The section I've just uncovered is a breaker which acts as a maximum temperature cut off when the regulator is at its highest setting. Inside the glass tube is a thin metal rod that expands with the heat. One end is held rigid while the other end is connected to a piece of spring steel. When the element gets to a preset temperature the rod expands, allowing the spring to move out and force the terminals apart, effectively turning the element off. As the rod cools it retracts and reconnects the terminals again which turn the element back on. We hope this video has been of use to you and remember to shop online at apartforyou.co.uk for all your domestic appliance spares because this is how we're able to make these free videos. Thanks for watching.